Hello super user! In this lesson we're going to talk about actually applying both hairpins and slurs to different notes in finale. Now we've already learned how to delete hairpins and slurs as well as other musical elements and we've learned how to copy them but we've not actually learned how to create them using keyboard maestro and so that's what we're going to do here in this lesson. And these are all musical elements so we're going to put them under the musical elements palette. And to give you a brief overview of what we're doing which it's going to be really important with this lesson because things are going to get more advanced than we've done so far, is we are going to, if you have a note here already on the staff, we're going to select it with the selection tool and then have the keyboard maestro come up here to plugins, JW plugins, JW pattern. If you don't have JW pattern installed, I have some instructions in the description for this lesson. And then we're going to go to dynamics, hairpins, and apply a crescendo, hit apply, and close. Now that may seem simple, but there's actually several layers to this that you might not be seeing right now that makes this topic worthy of its very own lesson and why this is perhaps one of the coolest things you'll ever do in Keyboard Maestro. So first I'm just gonna quickly delete that and we're gonna head over back to Keyboard Maestro and start creating the crescendo script. So in the musical elements group, we're gonna create a new macro and we're gonna call this one Crescendo. You could call this hairpins Crescendo if you want, just to keep things organized, but Crescendo works as well. For the trigger, we are gonna use the trigger of Z. Why, like most of these triggers, it can be whatever you want, just that historically Z is what I've always used. New action. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the menu item of JW Pattern. So over here to menu, finale, plugins, JW plugins, and pattern. Now technically it may not be under JW plugins. It depends on where you installed JW pattern. And that's just the folder I created for all the JW plugins. And so now let's just quickly see what that did. Control A and now Z and it opened up JW pattern. Now what we have to do is two things. First we have to come down here to select dynamics and we have to move the mouse to select hairpins. And then finally, we have to make sure that this says crescendo and then hit apply, then hit close. So that's the process. So let's start coding it up. Come back over here. We're gonna have to use the mouse position or we're gonna have to click the mouse at a specific position, which is okay, we've done that before. And I'm just gonna tell you right now that the first one to click the arrow to open up the drop down menu is gonna be at 32108. And then to actually click hairpins, I'm going to tell you right now, this is at 70, 148. And again, that's from the top left-hand corner of the JW pattern window. And of course, if you wanted to, you could always change where this is from, but it's often just helpful to leave it as the default. And then remember, we wanted to press the button to do apply. And then another one for close. And then once we have this set up, remember, every time we hijack the mouse like this, it is always helpful to make sure we move the mouse back to the original spot. So let's go back real quickly and copy and paste the code that we had before, because it's just always easier to copy paste something like that than to do it yourself and retype it out. So it was under transposition, any of these, copy, set variable, musical elements, hairpins, just go back to where we were, paste, and then just for good practice, I always like to put it right before and then right after the move click. That way there's just as little time as possible when the mouse is in the wrong position. And then we can go back here to transposition, any of these, come back to the bottom, mouse position, copy, come back up here to musical elements, crescendo, and then paste. And again, we wanna move this to right after the mouse clicks. So now let's try running this, control A, and then Z for crescendo. Whoops, what just happened? That was not what I expected. It didn't apply a crescendo, and if you look at it again, it actually looked like it closed the box. We really wanted to open it. Is it just because our program is flawed? Well, let's try it again. No, it seemed to not be working right. Well, why can that be? Well, it turns out there's actually two different things going on here that are making our macro not work as expected. The first one, is that when I come up here to move and click, it's actually moving and clicking faster than Finale is opening up the menu item. So Finale opens up the JW Pattern plugin, it moves, it clicks, 
and then finally the plugin appears. That's one thing that's going on. The second thing that's going on is that this first move-in click actually happens to be where the little drop-down error is. So if I get out the plugin manually, it happens to be on this arrow, which this arrow triggers the menu to either open or close regardless of the current position it's in. When it opens up JW Pattern, it's actually closing the menu we want opened. And what makes this problem potentially even harder to solve is that most of the JW plugins in Finale 25 and later aren't optimized with Keyboard Maestro. So Keyboard Maestro doesn't have any sort of function or action to say, you know, if this Dynamics accordion menu is closed, open it, or if it's open, close it, or whatever, or click this specific thing. It doesn't have any of that logic built in because JW Pattern is not optimized for Keyboard Maestro. So what are we going to do? Well, first, let's just solve the first problem of making sure that this is actually open. Luckily, there is an action in Keyboard Maestro that allows us to wait. It allows us to basically pause the execution of the macro until we are ready to get started again. So if we come back up here and try to find a new action, we're going to search for pause. Now at first you can see there's many pauses. There's for pause movie, this mainly works in QuickTime Player, and you know, pause movie or track or whatever. This both works in iTunes and QuickTime. So you can actually use Keyboard Maestro to control a lot of native features on your Mac, including native Chrome features or even Safari features. It's really powerful that way. But we're sticking right now to pause. Now this pause pauses for a certain amount of time. There are a lot of people that use Keyboard Maestro that will pause for like 0.1 seconds or 0.2 seconds here instinctively just to make sure that there's enough time taken. Now that doesn't actually solve our problem. Let's say JW Pattern takes longer than 0.2 seconds to open up. Or even if you set up for like half a second, let's say JW Pattern takes longer than half a second to open up. Well, then your macro is kind of broken. And on top of that, if it opens up really quickly, like in the 0.1 seconds that it usually takes, and you decide to pause for 0.5 seconds, well then you've literally just wasted almost half a second. And that kind of defeats the purpose of trying to use Finale literally as fast as possible. Luckily, there's actually another function here called pause until, and delete the first pause we put in here. And you can see that this actually looks very similar to the if statements we are using. That's because these conditions are identical to the if statements. So we're going to add a condition, and we're going to actually add something that is new to this course, the found image condition. So basically, until Keyboard Maestro finds whatever specific image we tell it to find, it will just pause all execution. And so now all we have to do is pick an image on the screen that will only appear when JW Pattern is open. And just to make sure you're not confused, image does not necessarily mean like an image file or some sort of picture you've taken and then are literally opening. This is just any area of the screen that looks like the image we've told it to look like. So we're going to come over here to JW Pattern. We're actually just going to create a screenshot of just this top part because this will only appear when the window is open. So to do that on a Mac, Command Shift 4 will open up these hairpins and then you're just going to click and drag over this. And then to just take the screenshot, release your mouse, like this. And then real quickly you'll see it appear in this lower right hand corner. Just click and drag it to the image. If it disappears down here, you can just find it. Typically it lands on your desktop. And then you can just drag the file from your desktop onto here. Or just retake an image. And so now, long way of saying this, this macro will not run until JW Pattern is open. And it will begin running as soon as JW Pattern is open. So that's our first problem to solve. Check. Now our next thing we have to have solved is what if the plugin's already set up? We don't want to close this and then do something weird and it's just all messed up. If it's already set up and looks like this, we want it to just hit apply and then close. However, if it looks new like this, like it hasn't been used, we then want it to hit dynamics, hairpins, and apply then close. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to use the exact same thing we used here with pause until, and we're going to use it with an if statement. So we're going to drag an if statement here and drag all the stuff about moving and clicking the cursor into the body of the if statement. So now if it's not already set up, 
we're going to run these actions, hit apply, then close. But what do we do to tell it if it's already set up? Well, we just do an image condition like we just did. So for the add condition, hit add condition, found image condition, and then for this image, we're going to take a screenshot of JW pattern. So for this, command shift 4, and we can actually hit the space bar to only take a screenshot of this window. And then just click to take the screenshot. Come over here, drag it into the image. And again, if it disappeared down here in the lower right hand corner, before you're able to drag it, just find the screenshot on your desktop and drag it here. Now there's just one more thing to be aware of when you do this specific screenshot of command shift 4 space 2 take a picture of a window is that by default it'll also capture the shadow of the window you may already have that turned off but in case you don't and it's still capturing the shadow and it's causing you problems just check the description and I'll have instructions on how to fix that so continuing if the screen contains this specifically we want to say if the screen does not contain this so if the plugin is already not set up then set it up then hit apply and close and we're done so for instance we have it set up close and we're going to try this out control a z and it applies the crescendo that's really cool and now if it was not set up already so let's go real quickly and mess it up and revert it back to normal like this so it looks like that close and try it from the beginning control a z it automatically sets it up and again, that's really cool. And these tricks, you're probably going to use a lot, especially if you're trying to use macros for the JW plugins. So now let's try to create a macro for decrescendo.